welcome back. This is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme five, element six, variable UK weather. Revision guides out, thinking hats on. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. So today we're gonna to be looking at the factors which affect our variable weather. There are five of these that we're gonna look at, so let's dive straight in. The first that we're gonna have a look at is latitude. And latitude is how far north or south we are from the equator. So the further north we are, the colder it is. We learned this back in lesson 5.2. We know that the equator receives more direct sunlight than closer to the poles. And that's because the sunlight has to go across a greater surface area closer to the poles than the equator does. So the UK, we're not on the Arctic Circle, but we're quite close to it on this diagram. Around here is going to be colder than it would be at the equator, but also depending on where you live in the UK, the further north that you go, it's also going to get colder there because you're still going to be going further away from the equator in terms of latitude. The second one is altitude. And altitude is another way of saying height. So the further up you are, the colder it's going to be. So on here, where we've got these browns and yellows, they're mountains. So these areas are going to be cooler than somewhere closer to sea level, like London. So Leeds, Manchester are going to be colder than London. And the reason for that is that temperature decreases with height and it decreases because less dense air is not so easily heated. The third bit of evidence is ocean currents. So the UK gets quite mild winters because the ocean around us is quite warm. So that ocean temperature also affects the air temperature around us and the moisture levels in our air as well. So this flow here is the North Atlantic Drift. It comes down from the equator and then moves further up to us, bringing us milder weather conditions because of it. The fourth one is air masses, and this one is slightly more complicated. An air mass is a large pocket of air that takes on the characteristics of the land or the water below it. So for example, down in the tropic, um, tropical continental comes from over Africa, so it's gonna be dry and hot. So if we quickly go through what each type of air mass will bring. So from the north, we've got Arctic Maritime, and that's gonna bring us wet and cold air. From the east, we're gonna get polar continental, and that brings us dry air in the summer and cold winters. From the south, as I already mentioned, tropical continental brings us dry and warm air. From the southwest, it brings us warm and moist air. And then from the northwest, we get our polar maritime, which brings us cold, showery weather. Whichever air mass is more dominant across the UK will dictate what type of weather that we get. But equally, there may be two air masses and it would be split down the middle. So that's why sometimes parts of the UK has one major air, air weather pattern and the other half has a different one. There is one more bit of evidence that I'm going to discuss with you, and that is urban heat islands. So this is a man-made characteristic of our weather. Cities, buildings, actually act a bit like a battery for radiation, insulation, and it stores up all that heat during the day, and then at night it irradiates it back out. So cities themselves tend to have a warmer ambient temperature than the countryside or the rural areas. But they also have a bit more pollution and we generate a bit more water vapor in cities as well, which all adds up to actually cities get a bit more rain. So it's being in a city is warmer, but it's also wetter. Well, that's it. So what we've done today is looked at the five different characteristics that affect our weather. And that is the end of a five minute lesson. So hopefully it's given you the latitude to develop your own research on the topic. Don't forget to complete the try it now tasks for homework. Class dismissed.